church bless us and guide us through this morning and also give the words and the comfort to the person who's going to share his experience today help him and guide him is something i ask in jesus name amen, amen. so we continue with testimonies this morning and um, honestly I don't think a person needs introductions because I, I think everyone everyone already knows him. However, I would like to enjoy, uh, invite Johnny Besajuk uh, to, to, to share his uh, testimony this morning. John, is all yours. Thank you, Dolce. This is my mother's story, because I was born an Adventist, so I don't have that Apostle Paul's conversion on the way to Damascus. But it is a wonderful story, I feel, and I would just like to read something from the Isaiah uh, 56 to you. To them I, the Lord, say, respect the Sabbath, obey me completely, and keep our agreement then I will set up monuments <coughs> in the temple with your names written on them. Uh, written, uh, and, and this is a way of me and certainly my brother here to put the name of our mother in, in this temple. Her name was Radica, and you can see she didn't live that long, but uh, she uh, was born in. Uh, in a little village in 1927 in the village of Sochi near Belgrade. Um, and the village looked something like this. Uh, I am not sure that I have the exact picture, but today that village boasts a, a massive modern airport. It's a main airport, uh, Belgrade airport, airport. My mother's father was a tradesman and her uh, and her mother was a housewife, and uh, like most women at that time, obviously. My mother also had a younger brother. This was not a very religious family. Once or twice a year they would attend this uh, the Orthodox Church. However, my mother, although she had only four years of schooling due to the Second World War, often attended the Orthodox Church in the center of the village, and. Uh, we think, uh, we haven't been told very much, my brother and I, we think that he, she was desperate to obtain a Bible. She was very interested in, in obtaining a Bible, which was very difficult to do at the time. At the second, at the end of this, uh, we don't know how, she did get introduced to a village midwife, who was actually a Seventh-day Adventist member, and who gave her a Bible. At the end of the Second World War, my mother would have been nearly 18 years old. We are not sure when exactly and who were the Adventist co-porters, the men who were selling the Adventist literature from door to door, but they have made a contact with my mother through this village midwife. She became very interested in what these Adventist Christians were saying. She started reading the Bible and had some Bible instructions from them. It was when she declared to her parents that she will not eat pork and will observe Saturday as the Sabbath that her parents became very angry. In their minds, this was a new sect. We were called Sabbath keepers, Sabbatarians. They did not very, uh, worry very much whether their daughter believed in some prophecies from the Bible or whether she believed that the just will live by faith. No, their problem was with the change of the lifestyle. And that is the problem for many of our Orthodox, our Catholic, our Protestant friends. You change your lifestyle, you are the outcast. All right, believe in Daniel and Revelation, prophecy, believe, prophecies believe in the state of the dead as Adventists believe, but when, why suddenly worship on Saturday when the whole village knows the holy day is Sunday? Why stop eating pork 
we have eaten pork for years and years, they would say. Everyone at that time, and this is a big place for pork, my mother's village, I, I've seen it in action there. Everyone cooked with lard, everyone ate pork, so cooking with oil was very rare, very difficult to find oil. From now on, their daughter insisted that they cook separately for her, though she would take care of that. And then little Miss New Believer, because we were called New Believers as well, does not want to do anything on Saturday. It is her day of rest. The whole world is working, going, working, going about their daily chores on Saturday, but little madam will not clean the house and listen to this, she will not cook on Saturday. Why? Explain to me. Because it says in the Bible. What Bible? Nobody reads Bible. What are you talking about? And then there is more. More? What do you mean more? To her father, who was a heavy drinker, an even more heavy smoker, his daughter was able to explain that that is forbidden too. Where in the Bible does it say, thou shalt not smoke cigarettes? Well, it says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, certainly you want to keep it clean and drinking. What about take a little wine for thy stomach's sake? The grandfather was actually a very clever man, and very well informed, and he, he knew parts of the Bible. And uh, he, he knew that uh, he could goad her and tease her about these things. However, however, once a year, when the fruit of a big mulberry tree would fall down in the autumn, he would make a strong brandy from those fruits. He would then get drunk and beat my grandmother, who had to run away to her relations for a week or so. It was an annual event. So Raditsa's parents became ashamed of her. What will neighbors say? And at that time, in that place, everybody knew everything about their neighbors. They did not feel ashamed that her father got violently drunk, many men did just that, and that her mother had to run away for a while, but they felt ashamed that their daughter became different to other boys and girls in the village. In their mind, she was a fanatic, sect member, a brainwashed individual. Very soon, Radica was kicked out of the house, and she went to live with this Adventist midwife who lived not too far away. Those were difficult times because the lady was a poor woman, so feeding another mouth was challenging, and also my mother missed her parents. And they missed her too because they too loved her. After a period of time, we are again not sure how long, it was Radica's parents, uh, it was that her parents uh, accepted her back. They were in fact loving parents who also suffered because of this separation. She could carry on with her lifestyle, they said, providing she takes care of her own meals and so on. One more thing they tried. They sent her to Belgrade to their relative who was teaching in a prestigious grammar school. Could he possibly dissuade her from joining this weird religion? I think my mother spent a month in Uncle Ilya's household. He was, I met him personally, uh, uh, retired from uh, the, this uh, secondary school that he taught. He was absolutely the most wonderful and clever and educated man. And I would have liked to be a fly on the wall to listen to this four-year-old schooling uh, girl against his arguments. And this is what the Adventist education does to you, the voice of prophecy, the studying or Sabbath school lesson does to you. You are 18 and you're still able to converse uh, against the clever arguments of non-believers. He did not succeed. My mother was baptized, but I doubt whether her parents knew anything about it. And even if they knew, I doubt they would recognize, they, they would recognize the significance of the act. She started attending first small groups and gatherings, small gatherings of Adventists nearby, then a larger uh, church some miles away, and, my, uh, and, uh, and then my grandparents were in for the massive shock 
because she then brought uh, 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 an Adventist boyfriend and she said she wanted to marry him. And my, 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 my grandfather, she, he nearly had a heart attack, but he couldn't have a heart attack because he had all this alcohol in his veins, so he was, he was okay. So the parents relented and the rest is like a miracle story. It, 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 is, it, it is absolute a miracle story because my father and my mother moved to a bigger place, to Zemun, uh, uh, and th this was me uh, when they had me first. I was the firstborn, my brother knows that very well, but he was very much spoiled. Uh, this, is, this is the picture I wanted to show you. This for me sums up this miracle story. This is my mother and my wife and Seca's uh, mother. Uh, my father is behind, my brother there on the left, and uh, my, my children. And uh, my mother had all this family that and it became Adventist. What is even more miraculous is that my grandfather, a few years before his death, accepted Adventism and was baptized. And then was walking to the church of Sabbath because they made a little church in that village. He walked right through the village. So everyone who knew this Maestro Mita, who was totally drunk and wife beating man, he was just walking straight, he was not ashamed, straight to the church. When we tried to impress the granny to become an Adventist after my grandfather died, she said to me and my brother, she said, are we going to go to heaven and will I be together with Demetrius in heaven? And we said, yes, of course, Elamite says we will live in families. She says, in that case, my answer is no. Uh, because she remembered those meetings, so she never relented. So when I look at these old photographs and see this Christian family of Sunday Adventists created by this brave young girl, I can only think that it is a miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Some of the cultures are, and some of the ways that God works are the, are the same. So I do feel like I'm going back to my old days when I was younger, uh, when I was the only one in my family that I was an apprentice. So thank you for sharing. Um, and there's an English expression that sharing is caring. So this is what this moment is about, is caring not only about yourself, but caring about God and the others, because your experience can actually encourage other people in this place to be nearer to God. Because I have noticed that I thought I was the only one being through difficult situations, but I realize that I'm not the only one. And that made me feel more encouraged to approach that person, to speak with her, and to share my burdens. So I would invite you, if you didn't assign to, to share your story with us today, just do it. Because you will be the most blessed with 